Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Today we're gonna to talk about acute vessel closure as a complication of coronary interventions. I have no financial disclosures related to this presentation. Acute vessel closure can have devastating sequelae, it can present with acute ischemia, can progress to cardiogenic shock, and can also be associated with significant arrhythmic events, either VT or significant heart block. The incidence varies by the complexity of the case and the etiology of the acute closure. It's important to anticipate uh, any potential complications and try to avoid them. If, it, if they do occur, early recognition is key to be able to identify uh, the pathology and manage the patient. And of course, you will have to have management strategies lined up in case you have one of these complications. The etiologies range uh, between a dissection, uh, thrombosis, embolization, and no reflow phenomena. Uh, these are the biggest categories that we encounter when we, have, we think of acute vessel closure. Dissection, you're all aware of the classification of dissection, but it can result in acute vessel closure. This is mostly related to calcification of the vessel. Tortuosity can be a significant factor in trying to wire very tortuous lesions. Uh, oversized balloons and stents can uh, result in a dissection that can propagate. Catheter-mediated dissection can occur with deep throating of the catheter or rough manipulations uh, with uh, engagement of the ostea. This is an example of a case that came to the cath lab for di diagnostic angiogram. The patient had previously had aortic valve replacement. And you can see here that the RCA has a very funny um, angulation uh, with a uh, takeoff deep uh, in the cusp. The next injection resulted in dissection of the vessel and acute closure with immediate ST elevation and chest pain developing uh, on the table. This again was related to catheter position. The pressure was damped, but the injection was uh, given anyway and resulting is in this acute closure. And you can see here uh, the dissection flap and the false lumen with contrast staining. Diagnosis here is key. And then wiring uh, into the distal true lumen uh, is gonna be very important. This can be challenging because you can be trapped uh, behind the dissection flap and the false lumen. You may have to use parallel wire techniques. You may have to put um, aggressive angle on the tip of UR to try to get access to the true lumen. Once you are there, it's very important to identify uh, your position distally in the true lumen, either by using IBUS or uh, distal port injection cautiously to avoid extending uh, the, the false lumen. Once you have access to the distal true lumen, then you go ahead and you stent and you revascularize and recanalize the true lumen with appropriate restoration of TIMI-3 flow uh, into the vessel. This resulted, of course, in resolution of the ST elevations and a significant improvement in hemodynamics and patient symptoms. So uh, significant care should be given uh, when injecting, especially if the catheter uh, pressure is damped. Uh, recognize the, the, the section uh, as the complication causing uh, the problem. Do not lose wire position uh, because this is your access to uh, the distal true lumen. Uh, if you do have uh, issues with uh, losing the wire of, or as in the previous case, it was uh, based on an injection, try to put the wire in the true lumen, may need parallel wire uh, techniques or different angles on the tip. Always confirm the true lumen position distally. Uh, IBUS is probably the most reliable distal injection sometimes frowned upon because it can extend the false lumen and the dissection and further compromise the true lumen. Branch access uh, by the wire uh, is seen by some uh, to be uh, an evidence of being in the true lumen. This is not 100% reliable since the sections can sometimes extend into branches. Uh, stenting uh, the true lumen open is very important. And uh, whether you should stent uh, the initial um, location of the dissection to close the entry into the false lumen uh, versus stenting the whole length of the dissection uh, will depend on um, the extent and the severity of the dissection and the degree of compromise to the true lumen. Stent thrombosis is one of the other entities that can result in acute vessel closure. This will be related to a degree of anticoagulation and sometimes uh, underextended stents um, uh, can result in acute stent thrombosis. This is a case uh, with a distal uh, RCA stenosis, initially stented with initial good results. Shortly thereafter, patient had uh, significant ST elevations and chest pain. The picture showed uh, significant 
uh, compromise the flow uh, in the proximal vessel. And you can see here that the operators went in with the stent thinking that this was the uh, area where the problem was. And despite uh, deploying the stents, there was no significant improvement in flow. Further ballooning distal uh, and into the previously placed stent uh, resulted in restoration flow. But as you can see here, in the previous initial stents, there is significant filling defects suggesting of uh, stent thrombosis. And what you can also see here is that uh, the distal PDA has uh, occlusion uh, distally due to uh, embolization of some of the thrombus in the distal vessel. After aggressive dilation, you can see restoration flow, and there is evidence evident that the distal PDA is now uh, embolized. This is the final uh, angiogram uh, with stenting and aggressive dilation. IVUS is also recommended here to make sure that you have optimal stent deployment and extension impacts. Embolization uh, can happen, and this can be due to plaque embolization. Uh, thrombus can happen from uh, a lesion or a stent thrombosis, like seen in the previous uh, case, or from catheter. Air embolism uh, uh, has been described, and it's related to uh, air getting into your system. Uh, device uh, wire embolization uh, due to uh, malfunction of your equipment has been described. This is a case uh, where angiogram of a vein graft. Uh, was attempted. As you can see here, the tip of the catheter is lodged in a proximal plaque. There is the picture, and I will point your attention to the distal runoff beyond the graft insertion with the PDA and a PLV branch. And if you look closely, you'll see a piece of debris from uh, that lesion traveling down the vein graft and lodging into what we now will see a, a PLV branch causing significant compromise of flow in that branch. The catheter was uh, disengaged from the plaque, and now you can see that the PLV branch is a significant uh, compromise in flow. And despite standing at the proximal vessel and attempting to uh, reaccess the PLV branch with the wire, this was unsuccessful, and the patient suffered a very procedural myocardial infarction. This is another example where a patient presented with uh, non STEMI, and the culprit lesion was uh, thought to be the OM. You can see here that there is a lesion in the LED as well, but you can see to me flow in the LAD, and this is the LAD again, and the cranial uh, view. You can see here that there's significant uh, compromise of flow and uh, uh, contrast staining uh, in the LAD. And if you look closely, there will be a filling defect at the tip of the catheter um, in the left main. And that's probably the uh, ideology of the compromise in the LAD is embolization from the catheter, likely thrombus uh, into the LAD. And if you look closer, there is the filling defect at the tip of the catheter into the left main with the occlusion of the LAD. And at that time, you can see in the REO, uh, in the call of view, that uh, there is a wire down the OM, but the LAD ha has no flow and staining uh, in the LAD because of the embolization. Uh, of course, at this point in time, the patient has significant ST elevation and uh, significant hemodynamic compromise. One of the uh, treatments is to wire the LAD and do aspiration, aggressive aspiration to remove the embolic material and restore flow. Um, and in this case, the operators opted for balloon and stenting, which resulted in uh, recanalization of the epicardial LAD, but you can see that uh, the distal flow is still compromised and there's significant uh, compromise of the microvascular circulation time. And again, you see the LED open, but uh, there's not a significant uh, myocardial blush. And also you can see that this embolization affected the uh, distal uh, portion of the circumflex as well. The no reflow phenomena is, is the last entity we're going to talk about. This usually is encountered uh, when intervening on um, degenerated complex lesions in a vein graft. Uh, the multiple etiologies range from uh, and distal embolization of uh, plaque and uh, microemboli uh, to uh, endothelial swelling, neutrophil infiltration, platelet aggregation. All these uh, contribute to obstruction and spasm of the microvascular circulation with a significant reduction in distal flow. This is an example where you can see that the flow in the vein graft is significantly compromised and the flow in the distal runoff beyond the graft insertion uh, is compromised by the mere wiring of the lesion in the vein graft. Despite ballooning, 
you get a little bit of improvement in the flow in the graft itself, but the distal flow in the microvascular bed is still limited and restricted. Stenting uh, of the lesions in the body of the vein graft uh, was performed. A distal embolization protection uh, device here was not used because the operators thought uh, they did not have enough uh, landing zone. But after stenting, you can still see that flow is significantly improved, yet the distal flow is not as brisk or robust. With administration of uh, uh, pharmacotherapy with uh, nitroglycerin, adenosine, and micardipine, you get significant improvement in flow, both uh, in the graft and in the microvascular bed. In conclusion, acute vessel closure has multiple etiologies, and we need to be aware of the differential diagnosis when this complication happens. It can have uh, serious sequelae, and uh, patients can deteriorate uh, very quickly. Um, the use of uh, hemodynamic uh, circulatory support in these cases uh, can be uh, one of the measures to stabilize until you can actually restore flow. Anticipation prevention is the best strategy. If it does happen, early, early recognition and diagnosis is very, very important and appropriate management as we've seen in the above uh, presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, for the opportunity.